I'm going to show you a workflow that will significantly increase your development velocity all within VS Code. Let's see what it looks like. So right now I'm inside VS Code and I'm in a project that allows us to write emails for our notification system. And the way it works is we have an emails directory and each file in this directory is an email that's written using React and Tailwind. So I don't have to write HTML emails by hand. And I also have a local dev server that's running that also allows me to preview what the email will look like, uh, which is really convenient. Now, when GitHub Copilot came out, the first kind of like mind blowing moment was inline suggestions as you type. So let's say for example, that I want to extract this content into a local variable so that I can easily update it. So I can just be like const data, let's say it's an object and I can just tab, tab, tab as many times as I need. And let's say I'm going to delete this. And then again, just all I need to do is just hit enter and just tab and I'm good to go. And this is already a massive productivity boost. If you already know what you want to do, and this is just help, this helps you move faster. But sometimes there are situations where you want to kind of like ask questions or let's say you want the AI to do something for you. And that's when GitHub Copilot chat came out. So you have this panel where you can essentially ask AI for help uh, and you can easily give it all the context it needs to give you the right answers. So let's say here, for example, you'll notice that we have this as a context, which is the current file that we have open. And we can say something like explain this file. And what will happen is GitHub Copilot, it says used one reference. So it's here. It can also, let's say reference docs, for example, or uh, markdown files in your code base. And you can see here that you have an overview, key components, how things are structured. And you can see like an answer of what the email is about. But let's say, for example, that uh, I want to take things a step further and say, create a new usage alert email for users who reach 100% utilization. Because right now this is for the 80% uh, utilization. And what will happen is also going to get to work, but it will also give me code that I can use. And we'll be given like two options. We can also like apply our changes in line. And this will give us like a diff view where we can review all those changes and then either accept them or reject them. But also because in this case, we're going to create a new file, we'll just have this uh, done for us and we'll be able to do it. It's just, you know, right now it's just generating the stuff. Now it's done. It tells you what the key changes are. And let's say that now all I want to do is apply the changes. And you can see here that we either have a new file that we can create with this name or an active editor. So this page, if we want to replace the content, but let's stick to creating a new file and we can just, we just have one big change so we can just keep it. And now if I go back, you'll notice that we have a new email and we can see that it figured things out on its own. I didn't ask it to make the thing red. Uh, I didn't ask it exactly how to update the content, but it actually figured all of this stuff for me. And I think it looks good. Like you can see here, this is upgrade now, it's red. You have this warning sign, uh, but here it's kind of like a bit of a friendly nudge, uh, which is cool. But GitHub Copilot Chat just released agent mode, which actually takes things even further in terms of what type of tasks AI can do for you. And all you need to do is literally just, instead of the ask mode, to choose agent mode. And the difference is how the actual AI gets to work, because it kind of simulates what a software engineer would do when asked you know, a, for a specific task. So let's say, for example, here, I'm going to ask the agent something similar. Uh, and let's say, add a new email for 50% utilization, uh, but it's more of an FYI is what I say. Like it's more of an FYI, not a warning really. And then we just let it get to work. And you'll notice the difference is it's not just going to reference uh, like let's say other files or use the context we provide it, but it will actually do actions at the code base level. So here you can see that it searched the code base. It kind of like scanned all the files. It understands the structure. 
I will be able to tell, for example, which packages I'm using. Do I have any specific scripts? Uh, maybe I have specific instructions in the readme. It's just gonna scan all of this and kind of like build this context that it can use. And then it's gonna get to work and generate some code. But what's going to be mind blowing for you is that it will actually be able to test the changes to see you know, if it actually got to the correct result or not. So maybe we'll see if there are any type errors, linting errors, uh, and also even run commands. If part of the, you know, uh, thing we asked involves like running a bunch of commands. So yeah, you can see here that we search the code base, the code files are being generated, but also you can see here a step, which is validating the new email template. And we checked and there were no problems found. So now that AI model just has all of this additional context and it's kind of getting to work, it's going through steps. And if, you know, in this case, it's a pretty simple use case, but if you ask it for something a bit more complex, it will just get to work, review multiple files, and even just, let's say, make edits to multiple files. It depends on really what you're trying to do, but you'll find that it's gonna be a massive productivity boost. So let's say I'm gonna keep this change and I'll just go back to my browser. I now have the 50% alert. Again, looks good to me, it looks really good. And it just followed the instructions and there are no like, hey, upgrade now. It's more of like, check out the plans, which is really cool. Now, this is kind of like the cool thing about uh, GitHub Copilot's chat agent mode, but you'll notice that we have this button here, which is select tools. And when we click it, you'll see that we have the option to either install an extension or add an MCP server. So let's talk about MCP. So MCP or model context protocol is an open standard that allows AI models to connect and use external tools. And this kind of enhances the experience because when you think about it, imagine that GitHub Copilot chat in agent mode is actually able to maybe connect to a GitHub repo and then get the necessary context, for example. Or in the case that I'm gonna show you today, uh, we have, let's say, a remote database and we wanna be able to connect to it and actually, let's say, query it. So this is essentially what MCP is. And now it's in preview by the time of recording this video. But the idea is you have an MCP client, like VS Code, and you have an MCP server. So what will happen is, let's say you want to, you have a tool and you want to allow AI agents to interact with it, it would be through an MCP server. And at Neon, we have our own MCP server, uh, which is open source, of course. And we actually have in our docs kind of in detailed instructions on how to add support for it uh, inside your editor of choice. And the way it works really is pretty simple in VS Code. All you need to do is create an mcp.json file and you're going to add the following JSON. So here you have essentially a list of servers, you have the server name, you have the command, and then you have arguments that need to run. And here you have the URL of the MCP server. Now uh, for Neon, the MCP server is actually hosted uh, and it's remote. You can also connect to local MCP servers. Uh, and this is very useful for, let's say, testing things. But when you have a remote MCP, you have a much nicer experience. So once I hit save, you'll notice here that we actually have the start option. And what this will allow me to do is actually kick off an OAuth flow that allows me to connect my Neon account and I'm going to authorize Neon MCP server. So here you can see it can create projects, read them, modify them, and all I need to do is click authorize. So now I don't have to worry about, you know, dealing with API keys, manually creating them, adding them, and, and this is a much more secure way uh, to do things. And you can see here, authorization successful, you may close this window and return to the CLI. So now, because we have the server and it's running and we have access to 16 tools, we can see here what all the tools are and we can essentially select them. You have things like listing projects, creating projects. We have like the ability to run a SQL statement against a Neon database. So for example, now what I can do is, let's say I have a Neon database and then I just want to run a SQL query to get the data and then use that data and then I'll, I'll, let's say, add it. So we can do that. But let's say that first we want to test uh, list 
all of my neon projects. And what will happen is it's actually referencing mcp.json because I have it open, but it's going to get to work. And what will happen is you can see here, I'll help you list all your neon projects using the appropriate tool. And we have the list projects tool. And here we can see that this tool is from neon MCP server. And we have, we see that it doesn't accept any params. So we actually have the option to continue and it should return a list of all of my projects in my neon account. Um, and it's going to get to work. So you can imagine that this, with this workflow, we're actually going to be able to, let's say query the database, like the agent will be able to do it. It says here, I have three neon projects. I can see here where the projects are, um, which Postgres version, where they're deployed. And now I have also details about um, even like activity. So here kind of like the possibilities are endless and you can kind of do a lot with this new uh, kind of like feature in agent mode. If your apps are running on Azure, you can actually provision Neon Postgres through the Azure Marketplace. And what's cool is that Neon spend actually counts towards your Mac, so your Microsoft Azure consumption commitment. Now, all you need to do is go to the Azure console and search for Neon, and you'll see Neon Serverless Postgres. And now you can just click Create. This will allow you to create a Neon Serverless Postgres resource. And you'll see that it's tied to a subscription, a resource group. If you don't have one, you'll need to create one. And then you also need to specify the resource name. So for example, let's call it MS build demo and we'll create a new organization. So let's call it MS build demo work. And you also see that you can select a plan. Uh, so there are multiple plans. Each plan gives you a certain set of features and more resources. Uh, but you can get started for free and you can try out the experience uh, without needing uh, to pay for uh, your databases that are on the free plan. And that's it. You can then see kind of like an overview of the cost, $0 per month for like one time payment, which is good. And then you can click next. And here we'll get the Neon project details uh, that will be created for us on, on like Neon Neon. And we'll see here that we have the Postgres version that is 17. This is the name of the database that will be created, as well as this is the project region uh, that's selected. And yeah, we can then add tags to the resource if we need to. And then finally, we can just review and create. And once we hit create, uh, it will take a couple minutes to initialize the deployment and have our resource ready. And once that's done, we'll be able to access the actual uh, resource and view uh, the database in the Neon console as well, which is really convenient. So now we can see that the deployment is complete. We can go to resource and here we'll see that we actually have a portal URL that we can access. So if I click it, I'll be brought back to the Neon console where I can see essentially my uh, the project that was created. And we can see here also the connection details that we could use. So yeah, this is how easy it is for you to deploy uh, Neon Postgres through the Azure Marketplace. And that's it. This was VS Code's agent mode, support for MCP servers. You have a wide selection of large language models you can use. You can even bring your own key if you want. And all of this is available today. There's literally never been a better time to be a developer for you to leverage all these tools. And it's incredibly exciting. So yeah, go try out all this stuff and happy coding.